And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Money. Yes. Are you ready for America's favorite podcast segment, Funny Versus, starring the incomparable, the illustrious, the illegitimate Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up? Are you ready? Are you set? Are you ready to go? Are you prepared? Are you pumped up? Are you ready, buddy? Yeah, 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 I could say so. All right. Well then, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny! Cuomo resigned. Oh, yeah. yeah. I still want to know why it. he's not in handcuffs. Because white people can get away with so much. So much! It is astounding. Uh, we go through, oh, he his... should resign, he, he should resign, and the whole time I'm like, no, he should be arrested. Yeah. That's what should happen here. He shouldn't, like, just lose his job over gross sexual harassment. And then he's got his brother on TV covering up for him by not bringing up the allegations. It's so fucked up. Yeah. It's so incredibly fucked up. Yeah. Fucking Cuomo. I forgot about Cuomo this week. It's crazy. So much is happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, like, I, I don't even know what to say anymore because we're pretty much dead as a species. So yeah. I'm having a hard time with how much of this shit matters. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're I not going live... to be able to do anything about it. I want to live in a universe where the first Fast and the Furious movie bombed because, oh, what's the plot? Stealing VCRs. Okay, that's fucking stupid. But then they make ten Barb and Star movies. Yes. And each one is crazier than the last. Oh, Barb and Star in space! Barb and Star! Fight Nazis in... in... the ru in on the moon. You know? That's what yes. I want to see. Yeah. And then there's like a spinoff. So instead of Hobbs and Shaw, we just get Talking Club. Yes. <coughs> so that's what I want. That is what I want. Yeah. And let me tell you something. All this summer, we've been placing Barb and Star in movies. I don't think we did it last week, but Alone in the Dark was so bad that that we just didn't do it. But let me tell you, how much better is Barb and Star? How much better would, would uh, Burdenic be with Barb and Star in it? Oh, oh. Every movie needs at least some Barb and Star. They just, it just yeah. does. I am sorry this yeah. has been scientifically proven. There have been studies. Yeah. Okay. Like, oh my, oh my god, there's these birds. Do you see these birds? Oh my goodness, why are these birds attacking? I don't know. I don't know why these birds are attacking us. They're going to get in our hair. They're going to get in our hair. Oh no. I'm not <laughs> wearing I'm not wearing my running culottes. <laughs> oh, you maybe, know who could stop maybe, these birds? Maybe they're, just, maybe they're just hungry. Maybe we should get them some birds. Maybe we just need to get some bread. Oh, no, let's go to the bread store. You know who would be able to stop these birds? Don Cheadle. And, and that winds up being true. It turns out the birds were just hungry. Barb and Star feeds them. Yeah. 
and, and they go away. Yeah, and then they leave. Yeah. Love, love Barb and Star. Oh, God, I love everything so about much. that fucking movie. Love that movie so much. Fucking love it. That's the spin off. <laughs> So, I've been sick this week, Bunny. Have you? No, it's not the COVID. No, it's not. I got tested yesterday. I got three different tests yesterday, and I passed all of them. So, it's not COVID. Did I'm just study? sick. It's just fucked up. It's just fucked up because from, like, 1900 to 2019, you go, oh, I got sick. That's fine. Everybody gets sick. Everybody gets sick a couple of times a year. You take some medicine, you lay down for a little bit, and you're fine. Getting sick is a part of life. And then 2020 hit, and suddenly it's like, I've got a sniffle and a slight cough. Oh, my God, I've got COVID, and I'm going to fucking die. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can still get sick. And it's not COVID. And I feel like when I'm saying that, I'm saying it to society but also secretly to myself, because I am one of those people. I am one of those people now, apparently, where it's like, uh, my stomach hurts. Oh, my God, I've got it. It's like, no, no, no. You still get sick. Not everything is COVID. And so I've been sick this week. I've been been pooping like I've got something to prove. (laughs) I have been pooping as much as Michael Phelps is winning gold. If anything, it's impressive. I've got some... Imp- my my poop is, like, impressive right now. Yeah. So I got that going for me, which is good. Uh, but, but also, like, I, I was getting sick, but also I was barely eating, so... Uh, but I've, I've also lost a lot of weight, so, uh, hey, not eating has its uh, benefits. There's also the fact that, that a couple of days ago, my allergies were, like, killing me. Because just the cats. Yeah. The kittens that we have in the house are still not young enough to go outside. <coughs> so we have uh, kittens in the house. And we had a small yappy dog, Sketchy, but Sketchy's gone with Emerald. So we are still, we still have uh, Auntie and Uncle's dog, Bernard in the house, and it's much bigger, and it sheds, and it stinks, and it just wants to be pet, and so my allergies have been through the roof, and so my wife said, why don't you take an allergy pill, and I said, I don't think I should take an allergy pill, because as you and I both know, for whatever reason, my body chemistry makes it so that every single solitary allergy pill I take is basically three roofies, so maybe I shouldn't take an allergy pill, and my wife said, but you're... This, it's really bad right now, and you're suffering, and maybe it's just worth it. So I took an allergy pill, and I swear to God, I was groggy and fucked up for but like two days after that. It, it's okay as long as you don't get fresh with yourself, you know. Right. Right. So, and then there's also the fact that uh, my wife and I are actually drinking like adults now. Yeah. You know, for the longest time, like, oh, I'll have two or three uh, uh, Coors Lights, or I'll have a Corona. But now suddenly my wife is making, uh, you know, we've got scotch in the house and, and, and whiskeys and different types of whiskeys. And we'll look up recipes and we'll make them. And, uh, like... Uh, we, 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 we just bought a bunch of alcohol to make mudslides. And uh, my wife sometimes now uh, Twitch streams video games, and they get a little bit of views. But you know what gets a lot of views? Her and I drunk off our ass and me in a dress drinking at 1 a.m. <laughs> Apparently that's what people want to see. So it's like my body is like, 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 oh, my God, we're Jack Donaghy from 30 Rock drinking. What happened to the Miller highlights? Yeah. So my body's getting used well, to that. So if if I see you or Tasha pop up, if I get a notification, 
I might not necessarily yeah. actually be watching, but I will put a body in the room. Good, good. I appreciate that, you know, because that helps. Natasha gets upset when, you know, she bought this expensive camera that I'm using right now and an actual good microphone that won't whip off out of the window while I'm driving. And so, uh, so she spent money and she's trying and she's reading books and she's watching videos trying to learn how to be a successful Twitch streamer. And I was like, you're reading these books and you're watching these videos to learn how to be a Twitch streamer. Let me tell you how. Lose the shirt, wear a spaghetti strap. Yeah. You're a white woman with huge boobs. It's really simple. Yes. I'm sorry to have to say that. I'm just being a realist. This is the way you become a successful Twitch streamer, but uh, hey, what do I know? But she tries really hard, and it, she said to me, like, uh, hey, do you want to drink tonight? We can stream. And I'm like, I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. And she says, it's okay. It's just that I don't think that I alone am, as charis am charismatic enough to be successful. But when you and I get together, we're wonderful and people want to see that. And that really, like, I felt that in my heart, you know? Yeah. Like, damn, you know, that is, thank you. That, that is very sweet of you to say. So my wife's trying really hard. And uh, I've been sick, and it's not COVID. And also, uh, it, this is weird to say, but I'm freaking out. And that's exciting. Yes, you are. I'm out. And <coughs> I, I, I went out on, I came out on Twitter, and that wasn't a big deal because it's Twitter. You know? It's Twitter. <coughs> and some people were like, hey, you look great, and I support you. And, and that's fine. But not a lot of people cared because it's Twitter. So that was nice. It's like yelling, I'm gay and I'm proud in a busy New York City street. Like that's yeah. me coming out on Twitter. Like, okay, nobody cares. But still, <laughs> I get the pride and joy and happiness of saying, I just came out. Sure, nobody cared, but I did it. So then after that, I came out on Instagram and... Uh, a lot of people who, who who I knew, like uh, school mates and people I used to work with, saw that and supported me there. But the last one that I was really scared about was Facebook because I've got family there, you know, people yeah. who I ba barely know, uh, people who saw my story times in Norman and might not know all of my backstory, and. Uh, but I do say, I've been saying this to myself, through my entire experience with coming out about my pansexuality and my gender fluidity, is that if you really know who I am, this ain't too fucking surprising to you. Yeah. You know? If you really know me, you'll be like, oh... I'm gender fluid and sometimes I'm a woman and I wear a dress. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, in other news, fucking water is wet. What? <laughs> so, but still, there's a lot of people that don't know me that well who say that they know me. And so it, I, I was worried about coming out. And so I finally came out on, on Facebook. I got the Instagram story and I just, do you want to post this to Facebook? And it's like, oh, that's frightening of an idea to think about. And I was like, honey. It wants me to share this to Facebook. Should I? I'm a bit worried about that. And she's like, it's up to you. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let me just think about it. Let's drink like crazy. So we drank and we drank and we drank. And it's like 3 a.m. And she's like, hey, honey, uh, I'm a little bit wasted. You're a little bit wasted. Do you want to do, you know, it? Yeah. And I went, yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but fucking hell yeah. But first, let me do something. And I just posted it to Facebook. And I'm like, this is the exact way that I would come out on Facebook. Drunk at three in the morning, right before my wife and I are going to snuggle. Yeah. So I did that. And now I'm out. And that's been exciting. One of my 
friends on Facebook. We used to work together, and uh, he had a kid right around the same time that we had Bella. And so he is a super far right winger, and it, and he's the one person. And I think a lot of people have this. He's the one person where he's super far away from your political beliefs, so much so that like he's kind of, sort of, almost crazy. So much so that maybe, maybe I should unfriend this person. Yeah. But also, he's kind of a family friend, so I've got to keep this person as a friend on the social media. You know, I think a lot of people have that. Yeah. I think. But he posted about me in a dress, and I was like, shit. Fuck. This is it. Finally, the blowback that I have been fearing. This super far right winger who hates libtards is going to, like, tear me a new one. And he he wrote, uh, I have found that during this time of uh, social and political chaos, when all of us are dealing with this pandemic, a lot of people have spent a lot of time by themselves and have found time to reflect on who they are and who they want to be. I've seen a lot of people in my life go through some pretty drastic changes due to this pandemic, and you are obviously one of them. And let me just say that I commend you for being brave and living your truth. And I was like, oh, fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to start saying, like, you look nice in a dress, you queer. Drop 2024. Like, ah. But no, he was really nice and respectful. And I'm like, fuck it, okay. Yeah. Hey, I consider that a personal win. So now I'm, so now I'm just out about the fact that, hey, sometimes I wear a dress. Like, it's not a big deal. It's 2021. We're in the future. Women can wear pants. That, that was a huge plot point of the freaking Jungle Cruise movie, that women used to not be able to wear pants, so it shouldn't be a big deal. They don't want to dress up and look fucking pretty. So yeah. uh, I'm going for an Ed Wood thing, where it's like, I'm a man, and I've got a drink in my hand, a, a, a tumbler of scotch, and I'm drinking, and I can drink you under the table and kick your ass. And also... I'll be a beautiful woman doing it. Yeah. <laughs> is what I'm going for. But uh, let me tell you something. I had no idea how expensive big boobs are. So I went, I went for, for smaller ones. And I, and I had a couple people that said, you should go bigger. And it's like, you know how much uh, fake boobs my wife's boob size cost? It'd be like $250. To get really? my wife's boobs. Yeah. These here were like 40, and these are like nothing. These are like a small handful. I wanted to get my wife's, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to get like Natasha-sized boobs. How much are these? Shit. <laughs> okay. Well, I had no idea how much fake boobs cost. So it, it, it's a whole new world. It's a different world now. I'm learning so much stuff. I shaved my legs today. So they would look better in pantyhose, and they feel so nice, and I love them. And I have all these dresses now, and and I, I just feel really good about it. And I'm really happy that I have kids who uh, support it and aren't freaked out by it. And I have a wife that loves and supports it and, and is teaching me things about hair and makeup and dressing nice. And so sometimes she dresses nice. Because she sees me dressed up so nice, and it's like, oh, hey, I want to dress up nice too, like my husband, and it really nice and sweet, and and so that's been that's been me. How are you, Bunny? I I am good. I am good. Pantyhose, the couple of times I've worn them, is a very interesting sensation, a very cooling sensation. You know. Yeah. So, um, other than that, Jeannie is away for the weekend, so it's I been kind of lonely. I saw that. Is she in Seattle? Yes, she is. Yeah. For her son's wedding. Nice. I'm going to stay like this, try and get some more views. Cover up my mustache. Um, <laughs> 
let me put on. Let's, let's try and bait people into watching this part of the show here. I'm really happy that the pandemic happened because I can put a face mask on and not talk. And it'll seem, I seem almost passing, and I'm really excited about that. So here's my boobs. And then I'll put my feet up. And then, hey, boys, come watch our stream. I'm going to be playing Beat Saber later, and my boobs are going to be shaking. You yeah. should watch. No views. No extra views for this. You kidding me? You bastards. Look at this. Well, Look well, at my what damn. What did you expect, though? Did you expect them all to come rushing in? Like, how would they I even know yet? I absolutely did. I absolutely <coughs> did. Uh, I put my uh, legs up and was like, hey, boys, come see my screen. Nothing. Nothing. One extra person. Thank you. Whoever you are. So Jeannie's gone, huh? Yep. Yeah. She'll be back on Monday. Oh my god. I don't know. No, the reason that I'm sorry. Hi Bonnie. Where'd Jeannie go? Uh she went to school. she went to Seattle for her son's wedding. Oh, nice. Congratulations to her son. Yeah. So what's Eleanor's deal with Sonic? They're asking the hedgehog? About, we're asking about Sonic because the house is just looking like that. Oh, okay. That's Which Sonic? The one on Facebook. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. Because you. Right? Oh, when I lived with Debbie in Phoenix, we were a block away from a Sonic. You could just walk there. It was so cool. Literally, you can see it. You can walk Yeah. There. It was so nice being able to walk to a Sonic. So, but, um, yeah, we got to the Sonic. Definitely glad I didn't slide out. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So what are you up to? Um, are you swinging bachelor you? Yeah, right? I mean, like, so I've been masturbating a bit more. <laughs> you know, like, just stupid things. Like, like, there are some things you have to do because your other person's not there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got a 12-pack of Coca-Cola. Oh. Jeannie is listening. She said, not the engagement. Not the wedding, but the engagement. Okay. Well, I thought the wedding was happening directly after the engagement. I thought it was like a twofer. Hmm. Well, I guess cancel the wedding. So so I so I got a twelve I I got and drank a twelve pack of Coke, you know, because like like I'm so old. That's being bad, you know. Yeah. That's it. That's something I shouldn't do. That's something yeah. I probably wouldn't do if Jeannie was here. Especially now I know that she's listening. So nice. that's what I'll do. I'll 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 get a twelve pack of Coke. And I'll eat too much Taco Bell. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a rebel. Rebel! <laughs> I just, like, like for me in my life, though, I just feel like I am very comfortably slipping into grandpa mode. Yeah. You know? Like, that's what I want to be. You know? Grandpa's just looking forward to his retirement, whatever the fuck that might be. Yeah. You know. Uh, I understand that. I, I, odds the, are that it will be heat stroke, but... Hmm. <laughs> one of the reasons why I came out is because the pandemic has taught me that um, comfort is the most important thing in my life and I never want to fucking wear jeans for the rest of my life. Yeah. That before the pandemic, I would go out, and I was like, okay, let me wear jeans. They're uncomfortable, and I fucking hate them, but I'm going out, let me wear jeans. And then the pandemic happened, and the lockdown happened, and I'm wearing nothing but, like, sweats 
and pajama bottoms every day for a year, and then suddenly things are going back to normal, and I look at the jeans, and I'm like, no, I don't want to wear jeans. I hate jeans. Fuck it. I'm, and I'm, I, I, I've gotten to an age where the most important thing to me right now is just my comfort, and, like, and I don't care about what anybody else thinks, and it's like, fuck it. I'm going to be in a dress. I don't give a fuck. You know? Yeah. So it's like I understand that, like, I finally reached the age where it's like I don't really care what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy about that. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely do not care what other people think. Uh, I, I more view myself as a consciousness in a meat vehicle. And it, I'm okay with the meat vehicle it's in. I'm not thrilled with it. It's very much like the car I drive. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If you take a look at my car, nothing fancy. It's had a cracked windshield for like a, over a fucking year now. You know? And that's fine because yeah. it gets me to where I'm going. And I and I, I, I spend my more of my life in my head. You know? Where, yeah. like, in, in most conversations, it's like, what have, what have I basically been thinking that week, you know? Um, yeah. So that's it. It's like, I, I, I got stuck in a particular body, and I'm okay with that, you know? Doing anything about it would be like an effort I don't want to take, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> but if you want to put chrome re wheels on your ride and a nice hood scoop, go for it. Yeah. You know? I'm going to just shake my pink. I'm just going to shake my pink boobs until until we get more followers. There you go. <laughs> you want to see my necklace? Uh, first off, here is my wedding ring because it doesn't fit anymore because I got it when I was <coughs> freaking 20. So this is my wedding ring. And then I've got this ball on my necklace too. And you open it up and there's two things inside. Okay, number one is a plumbus from Rick and Morty. So I've got a plumbus here. And then number two is a small figure of spider ham. And it's in a, both of those are in a ball that I wear around my neck. So that's my jewelry. I love it. Yes. Yes. So, uh, been watching a lot of Batman 66. And it's just brought back a lot of really good memories. Yeah. Every just, episode is basically the same episode. One you know, night, you just yeah. swap out the bad guy. Yeah. One night, Bella and I stayed up late, and Bella started watching these compilations of different Jokers throughout history, and she kept having to. They kept having to pause them while I explained to them, like, like, Dad, what the hell is Batman Beyond? Who's Tim Drake, and I'm like, okay, that's a whole thing. Okay, let me explain that. And then it's like, wait, who's Jason Todd? And what's, what's the red hood? He doesn't even have a hood. He's got a mask. And I'm like, okay, that's also a whole thing. Let me explain death in the family to you. So it, it was this whole thing. And, and she, they started watching these different jokers throughout history, and I'm just like, like I'm sorry. But my Joker has a fake flower that shoots acid and is hanging out in the abandoned amusement park. Yeah. My Joker is not gritty. My Joker is not, uh, like, an, an intense, violent serial killer. No. My Joker tells you a joke and then hits you with one of those, like, uh, one of those, like, fist guns, you yeah. know? That's my Joker. My Joker has a bunch of puns and laughs a bunch and isn't some sort of twisted, demented fucking Charles Manson motherfucker. And my my Joker definitely does not have tattoos on his face. And I was trying to figure out who my Joker is. And then it just hit me. 
God damn it. My Joker has a mustache, but this is a shitty show, and he refuses to shave his mustache for this shitty TV show. Yes. So just cover my mustache with face paint. That is my Joker. Yeah. My Joker's a freaking Mexican. That's my Joker. Cesar Romero, motherfuckers. See, I don't know. See, I, I, I just think that that Batman and comic books in general are just really open to different interpretations. And I like to see different interpretations. And I like Batman and Robin because it's a throwback to Batman 66. Beyond the doubt. You know, uh, uh, you know in the, the, DC, the DC Cinematic Universe is hit and miss and most of it's pretty shit, but the animated movies are all fucking amazing. Yeah. And they're all in the same uh, universe. And so each movie is uh, a continuation of the other movie. And... Uh, now, in those movies, they just did The Long Halloween as a two-part film. And uh, fucking uh, Jensen Ackles from Supernatural is now the voice of Batman. Really? Yeah. And it's like, good for him. Yeah, he's good. been doing pretty good, and he's on The Boys, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, in the upcoming season, that's, that's going to be starting. He's, he's a huge part of the boys now. And it's like, shit, everyone's talking about that. Like, good for you, Jebson Stankles. Yeah, I just don't want to learn your whole universe, you know? Like, yeah. yeah, I hear the boys is good, but, like, I don't want to put in the effort, you know? Invincible is great. Now, that one, I want everybody to watch. Animated yeah. show, there's only, like, eight episodes or some shit like that fucking intense. You watch the first episode, and you think that it's a cheesy superhero story, and then the ending comes, and it's a shocking ending. The sh there's a shocking ending in the first episode, and then the rest of the season is fucking wonderful and incredible, and I want everyone to watch it. Yeah. Everyone. It's, really, it's, it's a really simple story, but with some really dark-ass twists, and I fucking love that show. But I haven't watched the book. Because, but yeah, because yeah, like, like, I just got into Invincible. Now we gotta get into the boys. Fucking uh. yeah. Also, it seems really gory, and I got kids. This is the reason why I never watch Game of Thrones. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. I even got to see Invincible, but, but yeah, I never watch Game of Thrones because it's like I can't be watching some sort of incest, violent, gory, titty show every week. Yeah. With my little kids. Game of Thrones for me was more like, all right, you're asking me to remember who way, way too many people are. Yeah. In the midst of the apocalypse, you know, like there's other shit going on. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't want I, 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 I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's good. I just have not had any interest in it. You, you're, you're not in the right headspace to get into uh, a story about the Justice League, but they're all violent, narcissistic assholes. Yeah. That's understandable. We, we, we're... We, we, we survived four years of Trump, and we're still in a pandemic, so I'm just not in the right headspace to watch the fucking boys right now. Yeah. I forced myself to watch Invincible, and I'm glad I did, because that was amazing. But, like, I, I can't watch the boys right now. I just can't. Although I'm really happy that Bones, from the new Star Trek movies, is doing so well for himself. Oh, my God, that guy is fucking amazing. I, he was I, great I am in so Thor Ragnarok with him because, like, I first noticed him in he was in a couple of different episodes of Xena the Warrior Princess. Fucking Xena! He was in at least Clear two Bane episodes that Zena. I know of. Carl Urban. Yeah. And no, and shit. therefore that implies he was in, in at least a couple of episodes of Hercules. Yeah. But I didn't like Hercules. Uh, I liked Xena. 
Yeah. Uh, Xena Warrior Princess is the show that taught me that, holy shit, Sam Raimi has a brother that looks just like him. Oh my god, Jockster the fucking mighty. I loved that whole okay, character. Sam, huh? Sam Raimi has a mini Sam Raimi that Sam Raimi puts in all of his shit. Yes, I know, yeah. That's I, what I, I love Ted Raimi. Ted Raimi is more of an actor. Yeah. And God, he He's is in good. a million yeah. B-horror cult movies, Ted Raimi. And the first three Spider-Mans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 he was like the second-hand guy for uh, J. Jonah Jameson. He would yeah. pop up like, Jonah, we've got two different ads running for the front page, you know? Oh, fucking jockster. It would be nice to see him come back. Yeah. It would be nice to see him come back. But just a couple yeah. of notes on Batman 66. It's basically the same goddamn episode every fucking time. You're just yeah. switching out the bad guy. You're switching out. It, like, it's the mad libs of TV shows. You know? Yeah. And, like, what exactly does fucking Commissioner Gordon do? No He's like, idea. oh my god, there's a crime in Gotham. They call Batman. No, like, maybe you investigate, you know, maybe you send a couple of units around. Yeah. Maybe yeah. an APB. I don't know. You do some cop shit. And then when yeah. you're foiled by the bad guy, then you call Batman. Yeah, at least try and do your fucking job. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is it yeah. anything other than a parking ticket? Yeah. Like, fucking, just because you have Batman doesn't mean you get to not be fucking police officer. And I accept that you in did. this... I accept that in this Batman 66 universe... That he is the world's greatest detective. Especially when you've got a commissioner who doesn't really want to do anything about crime himself. So yeah, comparatively, yeah. he is the world's greatest detective. But like, how good of a detective do you have to need when the bad guys are giving you very, very elaborate clues as to who they are, what they're going to do, where and when they're going to do it. Batman is the Benoit Blanc of detectives. Yeah. Yeah. I just sit down and let the mysteries solve themselves in front of me. <laughs> but that's kind of it. Those are some of my... But still, it is like entertaining as fuck every goddamn time, especially since you've got some really big Hollywood names at the time. I mean, they're not really A-listers, but Vincent Price, Shelley Winters, uh, oh my god, who else? I think it's Romero. Liberace, uh, for Christ's sake. Gorshin. You know, so it's a just watching these people, like, you could tell that they're having a lot of fun. The regulars yeah. on the show may not have been having as much fun, but Shelley Winters was loving every fucking second of it. And so was Vincent I'm... Price. It was like, let me go be as hammy as I want to be. Batman, the TV show, did my boy Vinny Price dirty. You mean yeah. to tell me you couldn't put him as some evil mad scientist in a haunted house, a, a giant mansion, and oh no, there's ghosts in it. No, you make him a freaking egg. <laughs> Fuck right off, TV Batman. You did Vincent Price dirty. Yeah. Piss me off. But now to jump out of Batman 66, like I think it's over, it's 
open to different interpretations, and that is what I would like to see, different interpretations. Like, like after Heath Ledger, I want to see everybody's fucking Joker now. I want to see everybody's Joker. I want to see them dig in and come up with what is their fucking interpretation of the Joker. And, like, like I appreciate Jared Leto's Joker... I appreciate the effort. I just swung, don't think it at worked. At least he swung from the ra- at least he swung for the rafters. You know? Yeah. It was like, okay, this at is least... a really different look for the Joker. Yeah. At least he at least he put in his, you know, hundred and ten percent and tried his hardest, but But it was a yeah. crap movie. Mm-hmm. What, you, you, That's what a no on? from me, dog. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Funny, that's are you about there? It. I think that's about it for this okay. week. Uh, okay. So, so we're going to revisit Norman Fell? We're not revisiting Norman Fell, but we're going to talk about the situation in which he got his own TV show and why he was sort of destined to fail. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, we'll get there. We'll get to Norman Fell. I just, I just really, really fucking enjoyed that one. You know, it just brought back, like, a lot of memories that... Oh, oh, you know, oh especially honey. With, especially, so many more memories. Especially, like, pulling up pictures of Norman Fell when I'm doing the artwork for the show and just seeing him in yep. all these different shots and from all these different movies, I'm like, oh, God, yeah. You know? It was yeah. just a, a wave of nostalgia. Like, yeah, I kind of remember seeing him in a lot of shit before the Three's Company, but, you know, I was young. I yeah. don't remember why. Yeah, uh, oh, well, then the nostalgia meter is going to go that shit insane for you this episode, because, uh, oh, just buckle up, baby. This is going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. And see, and see, just one final note before getting over there, because now I am curious. But, like, Three's Company was still in the time where everybody only really had three fucking channels. <laughs> Only three channels, yeah. You know, well, that's not technically true. You had ABC, CBS, and NBC. Oh. You know, that's the three main channels. Yeah. So, and like, there were a billion up, VHS channels all over the place. I, I watched a lot of Three's Company without particularly thinking it was all that good. Because it was yeah. just all that was on. It, it was always on. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're gonna love this one then. You're gonna love this one. This is gonna be this is gonna be huge. What? Oh yeah. Oh, this app, yeah. No, you're gonna love this one. Okay. I'm really excited. Then, then let's get on over there. In that case, so. Okay. This has been it for Bunny versus On the Edge of the Apocalypse. Pretty much sure, you know, humanity is over with, you know. And since we can't do anything else, let's just try to surf our way out, you know. But, as always really want you to remember is self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. I love that. And cut on that. And cut 